I'm James Tanner, and I'd like to welcome you to Quick Views of Genealogy. This presentation is on how to prepare and upload photos to FamilySearch Photos. The first thing you need to do is to go to FamilySearch.org, the website, and sign in. Once you sign in, you need to click on the link to the Photos website, which is at the center of the screen. The Photos website has a very prominent icon link to the Add Photos. You can add either one or more photos at a time uh, to the program. There are three requirements for photos before you begin uploading. The first of those that the images must be either JPEG or PNG file formats. Uh, it's not really important that you understand what these formats are, but that the, fo the photos that you upload need to be in this file format and have this kind of a file extension. Uh, if they don't, then you may have to go through a process to change the file extension and make it into a JPEG or P PNG file format file. Uh, the images must also not be larger than 5 megabytes. This is also something that you could do in a photo uh, manipulation program. The modern digital cameras and uh, scanners usually produce uh, files that are, are larger than this, than 5 megabytes, but not always. But you need to know the size of your file. You can find that by either getting information or, the, or asking for the properties of the file image. Or if in your browse, if you're in the view of your file folder, you're able to see the size of the file. You need to make sure that it's smaller than five megabytes. And last, all photos must be appropriate for all ages. This isn't your criteria of what's appropriate because each of the photos is reviewed for appropriateness. So your photos could or may be uh, rejected. Don't take this personally. Just uh, submit different photos. Remember, all the photos that go on to FamilySearch.org photos are going to be in public and viewable by anyone with the program. So it's probably not a good idea to include photos of anyone who's still alive. It's a difficult uh, issue for uh, obtaining the correct type of permission and it could be quite embarrassing. Once you uh, click on the uh, Add button, you'll go to the screen where you'll be able to do uh, upload a photo. It's a large green plus sign on a button that says Upload. Clicking on that button will give you the upload area. And the idea is that you drag and drop your photo into this area in order for it to be um, viewed uh, online it will then automatically be uploaded. I've outlined the upload area in red so you can see it's quite a quite a large portion of the uh, of the view screen here. Also while you're looking at this upload area you might want to check out the upload guidelines, privacy policy in terms of use. All of those are contained here in a link. Uh, the upload guidelines are particularly interesting and it will give you a better idea of what kinds of photos are considered to be appropriate. Now, if you uh, have a photo and it's not quite in the format or ready to be um, uploaded for either the fact that it needs to be changed in its file format or uh, so other things need to be done to the photo, uh, you can use a program called Google's Picasa. This is a free program that you can download from Google. It actually works very well for preparing photos for upload to um, family, search family treats, photos program, and other online programs. There are other programs, of course, that, that can accomplish the same thing. Uh, many commercial programs, uh, Photoshop Essentials, uh, Photoshop itself, Lightroom, uh, just to name a few. Uh, all of these programs are much more expensive than free. So it's, uh, if you're looking for a quick and easy solution, just use a Picasa to uh, manipulate your photos. One thing that you will find if you download Picasa is that Picasa will 
um, automatically find and display all of the photos on your computer and on the hard drives attached to it. Uh, this can be a little disconcerting to some people because they they are afraid that Picasa is making a copy of their photos and maybe even uploading that copy to Google. That is absolutely not the case. Um, Picasa is merely a directory and goes and finds the photos but makes no changes to the photos unless you do so intentionally. So they'll remain there and there's no extra copies floating around and it doesn't take up all the space on your hard drive. This particular image of my great-grandfather is a TIFF image and it's 22 megabytes in size so first of all it's the wrong file format and secondly uh, it's too large to be uploaded. So I'd have to correct both of those before I could upload this image to um, Family Search fo uh, Photos. Now, there's two other things that need to be done. The image is slightly skewed. It's, it's not quite straight. It would be a good idea to just straighten it a little bit and also crop it down because it has a rather large white space around it and it can make that smaller. Okay, so I'll use Picasa to do both of those. I've opened the, pro the photo in the Picasa uh, viewer, and up here in the corner there's icons for straightening and cropping the image. It's obviously other things that you can do to the image. I don't recommend uh, doing much um, photo manipulation or editing to, uh, on your photos that uh, you're going to use for archive purposes. In fact, the things that you should change on an original photo are very, very, very limited. However, if you want to put the photo online and make changes, that's entirely up to your discretion. Uh, this is the photo after I made the changes. I straightened it, I cropped it, and, I, uh, and when I export this photo from Picasa, it's going to end up being a JPEG file in only 234 kilobytes, which means uh, it's way smaller than is required by uh, uh, family search family tree photos. Now I can go ahead and export the photo from Picasa. There's a button at the bottom of the screen that says export and I can choose to use different uh, image quality. Uh, nothing that's going to be exported here will be uh, of, any, of any concern so I use the largest quality setting be careful to know where the photo is going to be exported on your computer because uh, Picasso will use whatever default setting you have or put the photo back in the same in the same uh, folder on your hard drive so you need to know where that is so you can find this uh, your exported photo so you can drag it into the upload box and and upload it to family search family tree photos Okay, so now we're through with that portion. I'm going to switch over to a live view. And um, I've already signed in to uh, Family Search. I'm ready to click on the Photos link. I've clicked now on the Photos link and uh, clicked again on the Add button. Now I'll go to the next le uh, level, which is to click on the Upload, little green X there. I've already prepared that photo that I showed you a second ago in Picasa. Now I'm just going to drag that over and drop it into the green area. The photo is now being uploaded. It says immediately Upload Complete. And uh, one of the things that you might have to do in order to see the photo at this point is to uh, refresh this page or reload this page. So I'm going to reload this page. There's my photo that uh, I just uh, uploaded. I can click on that photo now and when I do it takes me to the tagging area of the program. I can click anywhere on the photo and get a tag. I choose to put it up above the image or at the bottom of the image and then drag the little oval diagonally until the little circle diagonally until it uh, gives, gives a good framing for the uh, face in the photo that I'm trying to uh, tag. 
In this case, I'm going to start typing in my great-grandfather's name. Turns out that I have other photos already uploaded of him, and so his name appears in the list here. If, he, if this was my first photo, it would ask me to add that person in. Once I click, the photo is now tagged, and a name of the individual appears over here on the right-hand side. One of the things you want to do is go to the tagged person. So if you click on that name, you'll get a, a number of different options. When you go to the tagged person, it will show all of the photos available for that individual. And you can choose which of the photos you want to use as the default photo that shows up in uh, Family Tree. It's the little photo that's circled up here by the name and that will appear in Family Tree. As you mouse over each of these photos, you'll see a little black icon pop up. Those little black icons are where you click to get the default photo. People always ask me what happens if I choose a photo and then my cousins choose another photo and then I choose a photo and back and forth. The answer is yeah, eventually you'll all get tired and leave one of them to be the default photo. So anybody who has multiple photos can go in and change the photo. I'm going to go ahead and leave the older photo of uh, Henry Tanner. That's more likely the way that uh, those who remember him will, will have remembered seeing him. The one I just loaded was of his wedding day, and or wedding, at least he's dressed up to go to his wedding. Uh, that's about it for uploading a photo to uh, Family Search, Family Tree Photos. There's a couple of other technical things that you need to worry about. Uh, particularly uh, if you're going to uh, upload a photo for the first time for an individual, you'll need to identify that individual. In that case, I suggest that you uh, make a note of their person identifier number. Let's go to the family tree and I'll show you which number you need to go to. So I'll go to the person and open up my great-grandfather's person page in uh, in family tree, you'll see the photo is displayed, the default photo is displayed here, and it says there are six photos. When I click on that link, I'll be able to see all six photos, including the one I just uploaded. There's also a space here to go directly to add a photo from uh, inside the family tree program. I can go back to the details, click on the little details link here, and go back to the details of the, of the person and uh, see the rest of the information. That person identifier number that I indicated is this lettered number and letters. Sometimes there's numbers with the letters that appears for each of the individuals in family tree. And it's helpful to know those numbers when you're doing actions like this so that if you have to search for the individual, you can search by their uh, identification number and not have to look for their name which may be very common, and you may have difficulty finding them in the program. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for your patience and listening, and we'll see you next time on Quick Views and Genealogy.